G'day friends and foes, RJ here with RJ's This Is Not Legal Advice and this is episode 117 I think I put, uh, might have skipped a few numbers there but uh, there's a reason for that. Anyway, so this episode uh, deals with basically uh, a flyer that I received uh, at the protest today that was at Brisbane and that flyer uh, is an Australia One uh, flyer. Uh, I'm not uh, going to particularly talk about, you know, purported electoral fraud, alleged electoral fraud, etc. It's just about the policies listed on this particular Australia One flyer. So I'll just show the view too. Uh, got a nice view here. So on top on top of Australia Fair in Queensland on the Gold Coast. Let's go slowly around. So over there, maybe you can zoom in. That is the marina. So that area is called the spit. So it's like a big sandbar basically with I'm sure some rocks in it and whatever as well. Uh, but it goes to basically the inlet of the Tasman Sea. You have the broad water here uh, and you know, it's quite a nice little area. Wouldn't recommend swimming across that water especially at night time but there's a lot of bull sharks in particular, probably great whites and whatever up this way as well. So it's an interesting place to do a live video. Maybe sounds like someone's got a bit of road rage happening. Queensland does have really terrible uh, drivers. Anyway, so I'll get on to this flyer. Uh, probably not the best location to do the video. Look, it's dangerous. I don't want people to be stupid. They've got a Black Lives Matter in there and some handprints. Anyway, so this is a flyer I received. So as you see, there's Ricardo Bossi, leader of Australia One Party, published uh, author and speaker, international uh, business consultant, Australian Army Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel. Sign up at AustraliaOneParty.com. And it's got QLD at AustraliaOneParty.com. So presumably that is, uh, if you send an email there, it will go to Wendy Cruz, who I believe is the Australia One Queensland coordinator. You know, she uh, did a great job, uh, I'm sure, with the election and you know, trying to contact people, find other candidates, etc. One thing I did notice about this is it doesn't have the legally required uh, apparently, uh, uh, authorization. So it should say, you know, whoever authorized it, uh, you have that for both federal and for state law, even though, you know, the electoral period, I guess is probably still uh, current. It depends when the writs are returned. So basically the governor general will, or the governor in the case of Queensland, uh, but governor general federally will write a bit of paper and then sign it saying I hereby declare you know there's going to be an election uh, parliament's dissolved you will have uh, a timetable in there so it'll be you know the elections on the 31st of October and these writs are to be returned within 100 days or whatever it is for state elections I didn't think I was going to be speaking about this so it is 100 days for federal elections but it's probably similar for Queensland or maybe it's just when they finish counting all the ballots and after a time period for, you know, uh, mailing ballots to arrive, etc. But anyway, so uh, they got A1 there, Australia 1. Like I've said in previous video, one interesting thing about the name is it sounds like if you vote for Australia 1, then Australia will win. So I'll go through these individually. You have, uh, it says Australia Sovereign. Uh, return to the true Australian Constitution, 1901. There is no such thing as a 1901 Constitution. It's only 1900. Uh, it's a UK Act of Parliament. Uh, but there are a lot of people that 
have followed certain individuals who have been, you know, pumping out that it's 1901, and also, uh, you know, there's people like Graham Jeffs of the Australian Patriots role, who also had the Constitution of, oh, sorry, Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Party with Steve Wickenden, uh, but basically. Uh, you know, basically he has said in videos and maybe also typed as well that uh, Australia passed its own constitution on the 1st of uh, January 1901 and that it was gazetted then, it was not gazetted on the 1st of January 1901, you can look up the gazette from then, uh, there's no point for Australia to gazette a UK Act of Parliament uh, there are some exceptions to that because, you know, there are the Australia Acts as an example where the UK and Australia both uh, supposedly passed a Act of Parliament that, you know, is probably invalid for a number of reasons and that was even uh, found by a single judge in the High Court being Justice Kirby in 2003 in... I always forget if it's Attorney General of Western Australia against Marquette, or Marquette, however you pronounce it, or if it's Marquette against AGWA, so Attorney General of Western Australia. So he alone said, question the validity of some of the parts of the Australia's uh, Australia Acts, uh, because it made certain changes to the Western Australia Constitution and the Queensland Constitution as an example that the constitutions themselves specifically stated they needed a referendum, a successful referenda uh, if you look at it with the two states to change those provisions and that didn't happen plus also the whole thing is ridiculous in purporting to uh, say Australia is a sovereign independent country when even in our own constitution the Commonwealth one it says that Australia is a possession of the Queen it also says that the uh, basically Australia is a taken to be a self-governing colony of the UK of the Queen whichever way you want to look at it so that is in a preamble and also so-called covering clause 8 uh, which is really section 8 uh, but, you know, a lot of people don't like me to get into technical stuff with that. So anyway, I'll get back to this flyer. So, they should change a date, 1900, uh, but, you know, it's... In law, you are supposed to follow the Constitution, and any law that doesn't follow the Constitution uh, is not really a valid law. And there are technicalities with that, uh, as in what is a valid law, federally versus state, etc. I have covered that in previous videos, uh, but I think Tindler episode 9 is one of those videos. There was part 2 about the so-called Queen of Australia, which is a fake title. So anyway, you have renegotiate or withdraw from all international agreements that are not in Australia's national interest. Uh, you know, that's a great policy we should do that reassess all foreign investment in australia uh, again a great policy but obviously you need some kind of threshold uh, for that because otherwise it's impossible to manage so just say if there's a, a russian dude and he he buys what's a good example so it depends really what you mean by foreign investment but i'm trying to pick something that's not land but just say you know, a, a Russian business does a deal, a joint venture with the Ugg Boot Company, as an example. And, hey, look, we'll provide a bunch of sheepskins to you, you turn them into boots, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, is that really going to go to a foreign investment review board uh, if it's only worth, you know, $100,000 a year or something? Just as an example. Uh, cease all and any aid to despotic regimes and unethical organisations. Again, another given. You know, you shouldn't have any foreign aid, really. Uh, you know, sure you can help your friends if there's like some big disaster or something, and you know, to save it's Papua New Guinea as an example, and there's a massive earthquake or tidal wave or something like that to help them out, just to be buddies. Uh, but 
you know, there's people that are starving in Australia. There's 100,000 uh, plus homeless people in Australia. Uh, and again, homelessness, they have different definitions. They include people, uh, you know, couch surfing at a friend's house, uh, whereas, you know, a lot of people think of homelessness as in, you know, sleeping rough, sleeping outside, you know, sleeping in that park there that had quite a lot of homeless people that were te in tents, uh, that kind of thing, until they were moved on. And then, funnily enough, they went to the park just across the road there. Uh, some of the people had uh, apparent drug problems, etc., but they've been moved on. But anyway... So, you know, why are we giving, oh, forget the figures. So, a few years ago, there was something like half a billion Australian dollars given to Indonesia for their madrasas, their Islamic fundamentalist schools, that, you know, it's more about religion rather than educating people. And, you know, highly propagandized uh, things, so, I'm sure people can imagine that in some of these schools they were teaching, you know, Australia is a bad country, Australia is bad people, yet we gave them half a billion dollars, uh, 500 million dollars, to, you know, fund their education at those schools teaching hate to Australians, uh, purportedly. Uh, and we also gave, what was that, 300 million dollars, just from memory, uh, to Indonesia in foreign aid one year and they used it to buy or maybe it was 200 million dollars and then they used it plus extra money to buy say 300 million dollars worth of apache uh, ah-64 attack helicopters from the usa so how freaking stupid is that so move on to the next one and i'll try and be a bit quicker too so uh, establish national voter identification and electronic voter registration uh, you know we should have those things uh, with the electronic voter registration technically we already have that uh, so even if you change your license address uh, you know at the RMS formerly RTA in New South Wales as an example, then that will automatically update the uh, state and the federal electoral rolls and also the council ones, but that's really just part of the state ones. Uh, with national voter IDs, uh, there is a suspicion of that with a lot of people uh, in terms of back in about 1986, Bob Hawke, uh, or Bob Hawke as he's called, uh, or used to call himself, uh, he wanted to establish an Australia card and that would give certain benefits to Australians, uh, etc. Uh, basically, people rose up a bit against that, saying, you know, it's like tyranny, blah, blah, blah. But then we got a Medicare card anyway that's kind of the same thing. But if you have to have your license with you when you're driving a car or to buy some alcohol or cigarettes or whatever, uh, I don't smoke, I don't particularly like smoking or whatever, but, you know, if someone else wants to, then uh, it's no skin off my nose. But the point is, you know, for something so mundane as that, you need your license scan to get into a nightclub, then why the hell can you just say, oh, yeah, I'm Bill Smith at 35 Tawari Crescent at Seder, as an example. Uh, and then they just say, oh, yeah, sure, Bill, and mark you off. And, of course, also at the polling places, there should be an electronic uh, computer, whatever way you want to call it, uh, a register so that people can't just, you know, go vote in polling booth A, then they just drive down the road, polling, B, polling booth B, etc., 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 uh, where a lot of people actually do do that and uh, there's seldom any prosecutions for that uh, so people are really encouraged to do that and then you know they might vote 10 times and so do their buddies yet no one can say hey look they were issued with ballot 1725 blah 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 so we'll cancel that out so you know there's one less vote for who they voted for as an example 
So anyway, Australia self-reliance. Maybe they should have put Australian, but you know, then it loses the Australia thing. Uh, but you know, self-reliance uh, or autarky, as it used to be called, but people don't really know that word anymore. Self-sufficiency uh, is a great thing, and we should do that, of course. So restore national energy, food, and water independence by building key infrastructure. You know, that's great. Uh, restore water rights to the people. That's great. That also has a caveat, though. Uh, a lot of people in reading section 100 of the constitution think that you know just say just make an example up say there's a, part, a farm there and there's a farm there and the water flows past this farm and goes to the you know past that farm the river does uh, there's some people that think this person can just use all the water from the river and you know screw this person next door but that's not the case. The Constitution actually says a reasonable use of water. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, restore, uh, restore farms made uneconomical by unconstitutional law to the, the former farmers. So again, uh, based on what Bosey said, he brought up Section 100 of the Constitution today, uh, which is basically that uh, the water belongs to the states and residents of the states for reasonable use, uh, then, you know, that's not necessarily why farms are so uneconomical. Uh, it's often the little farms get pushed out by the big farms and because we do have uh, an oligopoly of supermarkets. So uh, basically, you know, Coles, Woolworths, Aldi, uh, whoever else, uh, Safeway, I think Woolworths is called in Victoria as an example, uh, they have a lot of bargaining power. They can force farmers to sell milk to them at a loss, which is ridiculous. Uh, you had a thing probably, I don't know, five years ago or something like that, uh, where they have uh, so-called clawbacks in a contracts with the farmers and they made the farmers have to pay, what was it, 13 cents a litre back, or three cents a litre, I don't remember exactly, uh, maybe uh, someone viewing can uh, put the details in here but they had to pay back money that they were already paid from like two years ago and how ridiculous is that there's a little bug where'd the bug go uh, that, so they already got paid you know farmer Bob just got paid $250,000 for a year's worth of milk as an example uh, being you know maybe a smaller type farmer and then all of a sudden he has to pay back fifty thousand uh, dollars which is freaking ridiculous and really uh, there are unfair contract terms and they should be enforced uh, really uh, so reshore our secondary processing and recycling industries and boost manufacturing so presumably by secondary processing uh, they mean recycling because uh, you know you've processed something once and then you reprocess it uh, maybe they really mean secondary industry uh, so you know you've got the primary industry so that's farming mining that kind of thing then a secondary industry where you process that stuff like you know you turn iron ore and coal into steel uh, and then you know you can turn that steel into part of a washing machine as an example then you have tertiary industry so that's uh, services provided to the former two then other versions of economics has you know a quaternary industry and a quinary industry some of those are like purely financial services or purely services where it's not actually you know so directly involved with the primary or secondary industries but anyway, uh, regain control of restore and build infrastructure, rail roads, bridges, air and seaports. So really with that, it would be helpful maybe if you go to their website, they might say specific things because that would be helpful than just having, you know, sound bites that don't really mean anything. Uh, restore a strong educational or education system. Uh, again, you know, the, 
doesn't really say anything in what they mean by that. For instance, is it get rid of uh, social engineering programs like Safe Schools Program, where it's supposedly about anti-bullying, uh, but you have uh, founders of it, like uh, Roz Ward, where she was filmed saying it wasn't really about bullying. And I don't remember the exact thing that she said. Uh, she was secretly filmed doing a presentation, so the story goes. But she said something like... She said something that some people could perceive as, hey, it's really about grooming or pushing the communist agenda, something like that. Uh, and then you also have the Professor Gary Dowsett, I think it was Gary, uh, who wrote some filthy article back in the 1980s from memory uh, that had in its title something like boiled lollies or boiled sweets or whatever. And it said that the, this is very paraphrased, that the homosexual rights people should be intermingled with the paedophile rights uh, people and uh, some crap about a line saying something like uh, adults and their young lovers which is freaking completely ridiculous and even just based on that why the hell is he even involved with policy making for schools uh, you know they're teaching this weird stuff in primary school uh, how to use dildos anally and all this other crap, supposedly, uh, you know, I wouldn't be having children go to uh, school if I had an option, if that makes sense, uh, as in a public school, uh, maybe private schools don't teach that stuff, uh, and then also you have homeschooling where, you know, you can set the curricula uh, somewhat, uh, they still of course have standards and testing and uh, showing you know your portfolio and stuff like that but you know school is supposed to be about learning how to read write count some people say to think uh, but like logic or whatever it's not supposed to be about hey look we got to uh, make it so so there's a theme park over there so I'll just use a silly example if I can zoom in on it so that little thing spins around there's got a ferris wheel too that is spinning around they got like a little gadget that you know turns people around or whatever but just say if that if the theme park association went and provided resources to uh, state schools uh, primary schools high schools whatever you want to call them public schools then uh, said hey we want you to use these textbooks and these textbooks say that using theme park rides is actually really good for your health and uh, you're an evil bigot if you don't like theme park rides. Just as an example. Uh, obviously a silly example just because uh, that way it's not too close to home if that makes sense. So, da -da -da. Australia military power develop the independent capability to protect Australia and her interests. Uh, that is a very lofty goal that is unrealistic for Australia to be fully self-sufficient militarily uh, when we have some very large, not so friendly people around and Australia has a very small population, also geographics uh, and geopolitics plays a role in that but obviously we should be able to, you know, hold at least some fighting capability and more so than now and also you have problems where our military personnel are apparently under attack uh, and somewhat quite unreasonably uh, for doing military actions so just say if there's some little kid running at a soldier or group of soldiers and they shoot that kid then maybe the kid had a bomb strapped to the kid like they used to do in Vietnam as an example but then there'll be a big inquiry and oh look the Australian soldiers are murderers because they murdered this poor little kid that did have a bomb attached to him or maybe he didn't but you know if you're fighting people that don't value life so much then they might send some people with no uh, 
bombs or whatever attached some little kitties uh, for one for the propaganda war and to make it that the hearts and minds of the you know allied forces or whatever aren't in the fight just like Vietnam was one uh, if that makes sense so you know if there was an all-out war between Vietnam and the USA then of course the USA would win but because I had the war going for so long even though it was never actually a war uh, it's an Indonesia or sorry Indo-China conflict then uh, and war was never officially declared uh, so the story goes but you know it was basically people started seeing what soldiers do and what they have to do to survive and uh, you know show atrocities on top of that as well but then the American public were like oh you know we need to bring our troops home and stuff like that apparently Australian troops had blood and feces and stuff like that uh, chucked on them in uh, you know the return parades and stuff like that as an example and that's just freaking ridiculous of course so you got developed full spectrum warfare capability including space sonic and cyber it's interesting they put sonic do they mean like hypersonic ballistic missiles i.e. ones that can travel faster than the speed of sound uh, you know like Mach 5 Mach 10 whatever uh, or they mean sonic as in sound as in uh, you know a big megaphone on a tank when we all be noisy and if they're going to put sonic they you know why not put light as well but anyway uh, so that's a little bit odd uh, develop an independent full spectrum warfare australian defense industry of course uh, australia should have our own defense industry uh, what do you do if you go to war and you know no ships can come to bring more weapons no more bullets uh, that kind of thing there are people uh, that many years ago used to claim that the point of globalism was to establish a one world government and uh, I think the most famous example of that was they said if just say you're building tanks if the USA produces the, the chassis the body of the tank and Canada the engine and Mexico you know the armament something like that then those countries would never go to war together uh, or war against each other uh, which is a bit stupid anyway but you know that's a mentality of some people so ensure well-being of all veterans and their families even after the veterans death of course you know that's a good thing uh, cease using ADF personnel uh, for drug tests indeed we shouldn't do that they do other experiments too uh, they used to have Australian soldiers for instance carry boxes from here to there big crates and they could see how long they could do it for and they gave the soldiers gas masks and then they put mustard gas and they were doing it with mustard gas uh, going back and forth and then they were looking at their injuries like where they're sweating and it turns to acid uh, and stuff like that and we also have of course uh, Maralinga as an example so the UK government in what would you call that in cahoots with the Australian government were having soldiers Australian soldiers and English ones too uh, over here while they set off a nuclear bomb there to see what happens and they're like oh you know just turn around when we tell you and then they wait for the flash because that can blind people of course they can even, uh, you know, destroy clothing, uh, that kind of thing. And then they'd say, okay, turn around. And then, you know, there's all these cancer clusters, as an example. And then there was compensation sought for those people. And it was just dragged out so long in the courts and still being dragged out that they're just waiting for people to die before they're entitled to any payments. And once they're dead, they're like, oh, you know, you don't need any more pain. Uh, yet we have for asbestos and uh, industrial dust disease is uh, that they have expedited court cases, so really quick ones, so that people get paid before they die. So I had a friend uh, in Lake Macquarie. He was a former mayor of Lake Macquarie uh, City Council. His name uh, is Lawrence or Laurie uh, Brewster and he 
did die from asbestos. So he uh, basically he thought he was getting fat, and he went to the doctor and thought, you know, all of a sudden he, his stomach was swollen, and it turned out that it was abdominal uh, mesothelioma, so cancer in. So you got your gut. Maybe not the best model, but you got your gut, and you got a thing called uh, your pleurium, and that like glues together your intestines and guts and whatever and he got cancer in there a lot of people know about uh, asbestosis uh, mesothelioma uh, of the lungs so lung cancer but not so many know about this other illness then he went to the doctor uh, or like once it was discovered what it was uh, then the doctor basically just told him oh you know say bye to your family you're going to be dead in a few weeks and then he did his own research uh, luckily and found out that there's a gastric uh, gastric sleeve ectomy or some name like that I uh, can't think of the terminology at the moment but basically they remove the plurium and then your guts are just like floating around in there but it buys people more time and then after he got that I think he lasted maybe half a year or a year or something like that and uh, he was quite sick for a lot of it so I didn't want to annoy him, disturb him, that kind of thing. I did go to a hospital with him filming, uh, filming him when he uh, was getting chemotherapy, uh, cisplatin, which is like a radioactive platinum that they give you that's $10,000 a bag and they give you like three bags of it and then you know you come back I don't know, six months later or something like that as a chemotherapy, uh, radiotherapy, whichever way you want to call it. And then he was really concerned that uh, about 20 years after September 11 that people would start getting uh, mesothelioma, abdominal or in the lungs, uh, because it takes about 20 years from after you're exposed to asbestos to, you know, getting cancer from it uh, and then how he uh, got mesothelioma was that his dad was renovating his bathroom or might have been the kitchen or you know maybe the whole house I don't remember exactly and uh, you know he played in that uh, and that was before people knew that you know asbestos was deadly because James Hart There's a car and a motorbike racing. The motorbike was winning and the car just beat them. Sorry I was a bit slow. Well, maybe there's some other p person gonna race me. Maybe. maybe not. Uh, anyway, so he ingested some asbestos fibers and then basically it breaks smaller and smaller so it's nearly infinitely small and then uh, gets so small that it apparently cleaves your DNA that kind of thing and stuffs you up. But anyway, so, sorry, I'll get back to this. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so, you know, uh, stopping a ADF personnel being used for experiments is a good thing. Uh, as in, you know, deadly experiments. Uh, cease the politicization of the ADF, so presumably uh, that's talking about Officially, the police and anyone that works for government isn't supposed to be political, you're supposed to be apolitical. Uh, in the army, as an example, uh, it's a prohibition being political or being involved in political activities. And one reason for that is that, you know, the public service is supposed to be above that. Another reason is because it tends to prevent coups. So just say if you had, I don't know, the common law court as an example. Uh, and they got a bunch of military personnel on board, uh, particularly high up people, so they control, you know, uh, the so called underlings. Uh, you've got the chain of command, and they're like, oh, you know, I really like this idea that the politicians are treasonous, so hey, look, we're going to allow Billy Bob take over the government and hang the traitors, etc. Just as an example. So there was a famous uh, series of cases uh, involved with that. Uh, there's a 
don't remember his rank. It might have been Major uh, Bernard Gaynor, and he complained that to the military that they were allowed to be used in the gay and lesbian uh, Mardi Gras in Sydney. So they had military personnel. They also had police as well, uh, as in not you know, looking after spectators, preventing terrorist attacks or, uh, you know, violence or, you know, helping people say, you know, the toilets are over here or whatever, but marching, dressed up in their uniforms and with, you know, like, I don't know, just as an example, like a dildo attached to the uniform and saying, I love whatever. Uh, and he complained about that, uh, rightfully so, and that's not an actual example, but, you know, it's illustrative and then he got fired from the reserves uh, which is ridiculous and you also had the speechwriter for what was he lieutenant general morrison maybe uh, and he had this famous speech that was uh, you know if you see something don't walk by you got to say something this is very paraphrased uh, he had a little slogan for it but there is a transgender soldier who apparently was friends with Bernard Gaynor's uh, father and he wrote that famous speech and it was basically you know don't be a bastard don't discriminate against people don't be an asshole uh, which is you know fine uh, and good but then that person was being an asshole to uh, Bernard Gaynor uh, writing publicly in social media things like uh, this is very paraphrased, but uh, I knew your daddy and he could take it like a real man and all this other stuff and uh, you know, Probably a lot worse than that uh, but then there was a uh, So-called gay rights activist in Canberra or he went to Canberra and then took Bernard Gaynor to the anti-discrimination tribunal and uh, tribunal I should say and uh, basically made his life hell. His name might have been Gary Burns, maybe. Again, you know, someone can look it up and put the correct information here. And anyway, he eventually won and I think got a prohibition against that person bringing more spurious claims. Uh, so it was, you know, this guy's discriminating because he's saying that uh, gay and lesbian military people can't march in the parade. Now, it wasn't about that at all. They can march, you know, in their civvies, so to speak, uh, their civilian clothing, but if they go there in a uniform, it's presenting that that is the political opinion of the military, as an example. So I reckon that's what that one's about. So Australia's social co cohesion says remove all institutional racism and sexism. Uh, there really isn't much of that in Australia, to be honest, uh, unless, you know, some people uh, might read into that that what they're saying is get rid of special benefits for certain groups. Like in New South Wales a few years ago, they used to have a quota that 60% of their... Uh, public servants, uh, the new ones had to be females, which is just stupid. You should do merits based. You know, if the best person for the job is a man, a woman, a bloody, you know, whatever. Uh, what's a good example? Uh, you know, if the best person who's a scientist for solving COVID 19 happens to be a communist dude, as an example, then, you know, that's a role they have. Uh, it shouldn't be, hey, we have to employ 50 communist people for every 100 uh, you know, centrist people or something like that. That's just stupid. And, of course, you get terrible uh, results when you do that because you're employing people based on what they look like, what they you know, smell like, what they identify as, what they, you know, which way they vote in elections or something like that. Uh, whereas they should pick whoever's going to do the best job. And sure, there are some disadvantaged groups that uh, can do with a hand up, uh, not a so-called hand out, uh, to try and, you know, make it so it's an open, play, even playing field, level playing field, whatever you want to call it, so that they can have, you know, their children, the next generation is 
uh, well educated as an as an example so then that next generation doesn't need any hand ups uh, because they can live on their own two feet something like that uh, establish national child protection anti pedophilia laws laws there already are uh, if you look in the criminal code, there's, you know, offences involving the use of carriage services to transmit child pornography, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, really what they have probably done, uh, I imagine, is they've taken the policy of, uh, you know, some people, uh, which is like a national paedophilia database. So that people can look up that, hey, look, there's no weirdos in my street, as in convicted ones, uh, so I don't have to keep my kid locked up in a house, in a, you know, and can't go in the front yard by themselves and stuff like that. Uh, so maybe that's what that's really talking about. Cease all immigration until infrastructure can sustain current population. Again, fair enough. Uh, we bring so many people in Australia every year, yet they don't, you know, make the sewer lines any thicker or... You know, build new power stations. They're closing the power stations down, which is freaking stupid. Because uh, coal, coal's so evil, supposedly. Uh, yet we just export the coal to India and China and Japan. That just makes more and more coal-fired power stations. How stupid is that? Uh, in which case, you're wasting greenhouse gases transporting the items, uh, the coal or whatever. Uh, they have. Uh, define Islam as a prescribed ideology. Prescribed means banned. So what they're saying is sort of like a one nation policy, which was, uh, you know, you can't discriminate against religions for the federal government at least, uh, and then state governments via federal legislation, even though that doesn't directly apply to state governments, as an example. Uh, and you can't establish a national religion uh, again as another example and I think I have covered uh, some little interesting exception or possible exception to that uh, in a previous video uh, but anyway uh, so basically they want to redefine Islam as a cult uh, not a religion so that therefore they can uh, you know make it that people can't wear burqas in banks as an example is my take on what they mean by that so ban full-term abortion again what an abhorrent thing of course there are some very very limited ex exceptions to that such as if a mother's bleeding to death that you know if they got to rip the kid out as quickly as they can to save the mother then you know that's a possible exception uh, to why that would be a bad idea but in Queensland uh, you know a kid can be half born and killed uh, if on the opinion of two doctors uh, they say that the mother may have some kind of harm and that harm can be that she just says oh look I don't want to have the kid because it'll make me feel sad which is just stupid and whatever happened to adoption uh, instead of aborting babies uh, repair the broken and destructive family law presumably it means uh, family law system family law courts uh, I did speak to a couple of interesting people today at the rally uh, which I'll do as Tinler 116 I think uh, just because it was the most interesting part uh, where they're saying you know people can do perjury in the family law courts and you know they get away with it no repercussions as an example uh, Australia economic power return all budgets to surplus again a good idea depending on a number of factors uh, you know it's fine to borrow money if it's for capital expenditure ie for things that can make you money in return uh, but you know it's stupid to borrow money for things that don't return any money so if you just say the government wants to turn the Broadwater just there into a giant art exhibition uh, permanently and they spend a hundred million dollars to put some sculptures in the water uh, are those hundred million dollars worth of sculptures which would probably be like five sculptures uh, going to generate more than that in return and you'd want it to be 
a lot more in return because otherwise what's the point as an example uh, also with surplus uh, that is again a sort of I'm not saying Australia one doing it as a so-called BS term but it can have many meanings so a surplus a true surplus is hey look the government doesn't owe any money uh, or is owed more money than it owes uh, but when governments talk about surplus they never mean that what they mean is uh, the repayments are less than the income so you borrow you know a trillion dollars uh, and someone owes you a billion dollars uh, under one definition they can say well look Australia has a surplus because they're only paying 900 million dollars interest on that trillion dollars just as a simplified example uh, flat income tax 20% capitals 10% rural uh, and in time replacing these with a 2% expenditure tax so again Pauline Hanson was advocating the so-called easy tax many years ago I think she had 3% uh, and there's what's his name there's supposed to be some economics doctor that come up with it uh, was it Dr Bennett or something like that uh, and basically they say every time you spend so, uh, money that you know they take two percent off it so two cents in the dollar and that will equate to the same amount of money as they do now with income tax uh, and you know capital gains tax and whatever other taxes uh, that's actually currently unconstitutional you cannot have uh, and also you know Tony Abbott also said have special economic zones uh, but again it's unconstitutional you need to have a successful referendum because the Constitution prohibits discrimination uh, in tax between the states and between different areas of the states so you know they'd have to have a successful referendum to do that which they may not be aware of uh, Tony Abbott apparently wasn't aware of it either and also Clive Palmer also said the same thing uh, as in you know have special economic zones so eliminate regressive taxes uh, capital gains super fringe benefits payroll and stamp duty uh, you know obviously if you're just going to the two percent expenditure tax then supposedly that is fine you also have in the USA a uh, idea that's been around for many years since about 2008 when Dr. Ron Paul who's an awesome awesome dude uh, former congressman he was a gynecologist obstetrician who delivered something like 3,000 babies etc uh, etc et but uh, they have a flat tax that I think was 20% or 10% and basically to make up for poor people not having that much money you have what's called a prebate so you know it's 10% tax but if you're really poor you get you know paid $10,000 up front and that goes down as the people get richer then you have the break-even point then you have the rich people still paying more if that makes sense but you know a lot of people think that's fairer a lot of people think it's not uh, fairer uh, re really what they mean is a progressive tax uh, regressive would mean that uh, you know poor people pay 80% of their tax and rich people pay 5% of the tax as an example uh, but anyway uh, do, do, do. Uh, with some of these things like capital gains tax uh, they may well be you know good uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too so to speak so capital gains tax for instance is you buy an investment property you pay three hundred thousand dollars for it uh, and it's in an area that's going up by thirty thousand dollars a year uh, so when you sell that house uh, you not only got the income uh, from like rent or whatever in the meantime but you also have that now it's worth which is really due to inflation and to uh, fractional reserve banking making up for that uh, that you know the place is now worth a million dollars so basically you got seven hundred thousand dollars for free if you don't have capital gains tax as opposed to hey look you've got to pay x dollars of that to the government as an example uh, but if you get rid of capital gains tax then you should really get rid of uh, you know negative gearing 
Uh, so what negative gearing is, is, and, and I'm not advocating for this, I think it's kind of silly in a way, uh, to get rid of the capital gains tax, I'm saying. Uh, but, uh, what's a good example? So, uh, just say you buy a house and uh, as an investment property, it costs you $250 a week uh, to pay for your mortgage and, uh, you know, the little repairs you do. Obviously, it's going to be a cheap uh, house, as an example, so it's probably not going to be so expensive to maintain, uh, even though being a cheap house, it probably needs more maintenance. Uh, but anyway, uh, then people uh, rent it out for cheaper than uh, it's costing them. So, you know, they can only get $220 a week for that house. Uh, so they're losing $30 a week. So then they get that deducted from their income tax, uh, which again, you know, uh, negative gearing is a good thing. It's a legitimate business expense. Uh, and the best properties are positive geared. So, in other words, you're making more money from them than you're losing, but a lot of people don't realise that. So, anyway, uh, renegotiate all trade deals to ensure fair, ethical and balanced terms for Australia. That's good, but of course a lot of people aren't going to then do any trade deals and you can go back to having tariffs and quotas and stuff like that. So, uh, just a second, I need to do something. Uh, I'll be finished soon. Shush. So I just had to uh, do something uh, quickly. Uh, so where was I up to? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so it's like uh, in America, as an example, uh, they used to have a trade deal called NAFTA. Now it's a North American Free Trade Agreement. And basically that made it so that uh, things started being manufactured in Mexico and to some extent uh, Canada it was not very even it was ripping off the USA really uh, because for instance Canada was charging uh, up until maybe I don't know, two years ago or something like that when Donald Trump changed it they were charging say 20% tariff on uh, US dairy goods so milk milk powder you know ice cream whatever cream but uh, America wasn't charging their Canada for steel imports uh, so it wasn't balanced so Canada you know had its cake and ate it too but anyway uh, Australia we have uh, what's it called and I can't even think of the name it's like Australia New Zealand US trade agreement uh, anyway, uh, so again, Australians got ripped off with, with that. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, we have Canadian bacon here, uh, even though that's not USA, but, uh, you know, indirectly can be imported to USA and then exported here. Uh, but, so maybe that's not the best example. But the idea is, hey, look, farmers here were screwed over. Uh, you know, we we're still having to pay, say, tariffs on certain things, or we didn't have to pay tariffs, but we were only exporting very limited quantity and value, whereas then our markets were flooded with US food, as an example. So again, going back to uh, restore farms made une uneconomical by unconstitutional law, how many uh, times have you gone to the supermarket and actually seen some Australian pork, as an example? Uh, and when they do have it, it's like $22 a kilo. And then you've got the Canadian uh, product of Canada or, you know, Canadian plus other imported uh, stuff in a mixed bag. Uh, and, you know, that's $9 a kilo, as an example. So, you know, it goes back to autarky. It's better 
if Australians pay, uh, you know, if we didn't have Canadian bacon here and we had to pay $12 a kilo for Australian bacon, so the farmers still had enough money, uh, instead of $22 for the very limited quantity that gets made here, and we probably just export our, you know, the best of our bacon to Japan for like 30 bucks a kilo, 50 bucks a kilo, uh, but, and then in Japan they probably pay $200 a kilo for it, uh, or a hundred dollars, whatever. But the idea is basically, uh, you know, if we didn't have any Canadian bacon here, then the Australian uh, piggeries could grow a lot more food. Uh, and this is ignoring, you know, factory farming versus uh, if you got, you know, one pig to a hectare or something like that. Uh, but it would be better if Australians were paying twelve bucks a kilo for bacon and Australian farmers had jobs. And then they buy, you know, uh, something from a retail shop that, uh, you know, little Sally's working at, uh, and Jeffrey owns. Uh, but Jeffrey and Sally's family are paying, you know, three bucks extra per kilo for bacon. Uh, you know, we've got too much short-term thinking where it's like, oh look, uh, if I buy Chinese bacon, it's only, you know, eight dollars a kilo instead of nine dollars. Oh wow, it's so awesome. Uh, and then people in Australia don't have jobs to even buy their Chinese bacon. And then if we go to war with China, then all they do is poison all the food uh, and put asbestos in all the products they're sending here, and, you know, we're screwed, just as an example uh, of what could happen. Uh, but anyway, uh, so... Da -da -da -da. Create more arable land, so that means fertile land, by building the revised Bradfield scheme to Green Queensland, New South Wales and South Australia and provide hydro energy from Tully uh, to Adelaide. So again, that's a good idea. Again, that was pinched even by uh, the LNP was talking about doing this modified Bradfield scheme. So it's basically, you know, if this is Queensland, you have all this water over here and over here that just pours into the sea. Uh, which it's probably needed in an ecosystem anyway, because uh, if you change it, you know, it may well be animals being extinct. But to pump it over here, and then it'll flow down the hill. Uh, they used to think you had to pump it everywhere, but some uh, people using geographical information systems worked out a path where, you know, they can feed the rivers. And then you can use the water here and here and here. You do it in different stages, whatever. Uh, and, you know, that's good. Uh, One Nation, uh, credit where credit's due, uh, has been advocating for the Bradfield scheme for, you know, how long have they been around? 25 years or whatever. Uh, 1998, I think they officially uh, launched. Uh, something like that. Anyway, uh, but basically in Western Australia, so imagine if that's the coast of Western Australia, you have a place called uh, Kalgoorlie that's near Coolgardie, and there was a gentleman who didn't get to see his, his engineering project uh, fulfilled, and his name was C.Y. O'Connor, maybe? And basically they pumped water from the coast into the inland. So you have Kalgoorlie, which is the largest, or used to be at least, the largest uh, gold mine in the world, and they actually had water there. And he was uh, belittled, defamed, destroyed, and he actually killed himself by riding a horse into the ocean. And didn't, then later on his project got built. And basically, you know, it made it so people could actually live inland a bit uh, in sig significant numbers. So basically, Bradfield's scheme was a similar thing. And, you know, it's many, many moons on and hasn't been done. And, you know, you might spend a billion dollars on it. I don't remember the exact figures uh, for the estimates. But it can make $5 billion worth of... Uh, increased agriculture uh, within however many years it was. Don't remember the figures off the top of my head, it's been a long day too, but you get the idea. So, seesaw renewable subsidies, so, you know, that's fair enough too. They've had uh, long enough to become self-sufficient and uh, presumably that has a caveat of you're still 
fund research and do research grants and stuff uh, to make solar panels more efficient, etc. And CSIRO, CSIRO as people call it, uh, that kind of thing. But, you know, if it costs you a million dollars, I'm just making up a figure, to provide or produce $800,000 worth of energy, that's just darn stupid. Sure, there's a lot of people getting rich from such schemes, and scams even, uh, but it's just wrong, to be honest. A lot of people point out that, hey, look, the coal mines and whatever get subsidised uh, in terms of, you know, they're allowed to buy water really cheap, as an example, or that they get uh, fuel excise, uh, you know, returned to them. They don't have to pay fuel excise for their vehicles that aren't even driving on the roads, to be honest, uh, for a lot of them, uh, as in like the big, you know, drag lines and uh, big Tonka trucks, so to speak, uh, but whatever. So it says, ensure cheap, reliable power, including hydro, coal, gas, oil, and nuclear sources. Nuclear will turn a lot of people off. Uh, one story I heard uh, that apparently was in a... I think it was in a One Nation newsletter, was that the real reason that uh, Sir Harold Holt, who was the Australian Prime Minister, who disappeared supposedly when he was swimming uh, at a beach in Victoria, uh, but then there was also a Navy clearance diver, I think his name is Gary Webb, Gary Webber, something like that. Maybe I'm mixing up the name that I used earlier. Uh, about the there's a car was going to have a race but apparently they didn't have a race uh, in the end uh, but uh, what's his name man? but anyway this dude uh, claimed that he had to dispose of Harold Holt's body that he was murdered in his house uh, at Portsea or wherever it was or you know where he was staying and that he had a special microchip under his chin that he got removed uh, surgically, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, uh, in that newsletter, it uh, said a different story. A lot of people also used to claim that it was because he wanted to uh, remove the troops from Vietnam, so America knocked him off. Uh, but really he's a dude apparently that at least popularised, maybe he didn't coin it, the term all the way with LBJ, at least for Australia. So he wasn't withdrawing the troops apparently, but what he wanted to do was build a series of nuclear power plants all around Australia and basically have energy reliance. And, you know, that would have been a good thing, uh, depending on geographical features. You know, you don't want it somewhere where it has earthquakes and all this other stuff, uh, or tsunamis, look at Fukushima. Uh, but it's not a good thing to have nuclear power plants in times of war. So, you know, that's a very lovely target. They're like, hey, imagine it's over there, they just bomb that and it kills a bunch of people on the Gold Coast, makes a whole lot more weak and you know all the wasted resources trying to decontaminate the area as an example so uh, nearly finished sorry uh, australia political freedom establish free speech and repeal section 18c of the racial discrimination act so what that is about is that someone can sue you if they're offended uh, by something you say uh, that pertains to race so there are other similar provisions that uh, I guess it's not sexy to talk about. Uh, a few years ago, Tony Abbott was going to repeal that section and there was too much backlash, so he didn't do it. We also had, oh, forget his name, from the Democratic Labor Party was also pushing it. Uh, forget his name again. Uh, but, you know, there was all that backlash, so it didn't happen. So that brings about another interesting topic for another day about offending people. Uh, so establishing a right to self-defense, we already have that right really. Uh, in Queensland, if someone's breaking into your house, you can kill the person. Uh, but of course, it comes down to, is it murder versus self-defense? If it's someone's just knocked on your door or, or something like that to 
you know, say hello to you, uh, or they are drunk and they think it's their house when their house is next door, or whatever, uh, in a suburb where they've got cookie cutter, uh, i.e. identical uh, buildings, and that's not reasonable, uh, it's not proportionate. But if someone breaks into your house with a knife, intending to rape or kill or, you know, stab you or whatever, then literally you could kill that person. Uh, even though, you know, I'm sure a lot of people don't want to have the guilty conscience, uh, even though, you know, it's self-defense, they're not really guilty, of killing a person, uh, you know, uh, especially if it's not like wartime, because that's a different story. But, you know, I'm sure most normal people would even feel sorry for the person they kill, even if the person's a real bastard, uh, if that makes sense, a real bad person. Uh, but then, you know, they might have a kid or their wife or something like that, or it's like, oh, gee, if I wasn't there at the time, then they would have just robbed the house and, you know, they wouldn't be dead. But anyway... Uh, but you do have the right to self-defense. It does have to be proportionate uh, and reasonable. Uh, again, if someone is trying to kill you uh, in Queensland, it doesn't have to be at your house, uh, then if you kill that person, then you're not guilty of a crime because, sure, you might still go to court and have to have a lawyer to, uh, you know show that you are innocent even though it's not supposed to work like that it's really the prosecution trying to show that you're guilty uh beyond reasonable doubt but you know you get the idea but if someone's just trying to have a fisty cuffs with you then it's unreasonable to kill that person unless say they know know that you have uh, say a brain injury and you're susceptible to death from a single punch or something like that plus also there is some murkiness uh, with the one punch can kill laws because if the argument is that one single punch can kill someone then someone could well in the future uh, kill someone who threatens to punch him and then say hey look it was reasonable and proportionate because look it's all over the news that one punch can kill uh, as an example and of course it can so of course people shouldn't go around assaulting people uh, nor even insulting them unreasonably so restore property rights to the landowner you know that's a, a great thing uh, you have things like the lock the gate campaign uh, where if you don't have a locked gate then because uh, it's enclosed land uh, act uh, that you can have companies go onto your property and uh, prospect for mineral wealth because you don't own the mineral wealth uh, on your land, even if you own the land outright, uh, so to speak. We don't have a loyal title in Australia, besides from the Queen's perspective, everything's a loyal title to her. Uh, and that means where, you know, you can even tell the Queen to piss off out of your land. Uh, there is one exception with that, in that the monarch is not supposed to go to the lower house of parliament. Uh, but that's more like a, a convention, if that makes sense. So, if so, imagine that Ricardo's picture here is a bunch of coal. You own the land. You own the land, as in you can exclude people uh, besides the government, uh, because the government's allowed to do what they like, uh, kind of. Uh, and really, by the government, it's really the Queen. Uh, so. You own all the land, do, 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 all the way to the centre of the earth. And also technically up until infinity in the sky, but then that has been changed to say you've got reasonable use of airspace. So uh, there was a court case where there was a company, they flew over Lord, what was his name, Bernstein, uh, property and they took some photos to save his castle mansion whatever in the UK and they contacted him and said hey we've got some lovely pictures uh, of your castle do you want to buy them from us and then he tried suing them saying hey look you flew your plane over our land uh, so you were trespassing but then the court put an end to you know you owning infinity airspace all the way to space because it's so ridiculous imagine if you know the owner of that building over there uh, says hey look 
no one's allowed to fly over my land. So even 20 or 10 kilometres in the air, uh, there's a plane and it has to turn around to avoid that person's space. It's just stupid. Uh, but if someone like flies a drone just you know above this roof here, then you can sue in trespass. But anyway, back to this. So if the land, as in the real dirt or whatever, and water and whatnot, is the white space, you don't actually own the black spaces, which is the mineral resources. That's owned by the government. And then they license that to uh, people for ridiculously low sums of money, being royalties. And then you also had Kevin Rudd as an example and Julia Gillard with the uh, super profits tax for mines. Uh, which is only paid on profits. So you have all these foreign-owned mines, Chinese mines as an example, like Yankol, and under that scheme, they wouldn't pay any tax uh, because they would get rid of the royalties, which is next to nothing anyway. It might be like $5 a tonne of coal. Uh, I don't remember the exact figures. But then they say, oh, well, look, we don't have any profits because Yankol sold the coal to China at no profit. So... Ha ha, it's only the Australian companies that are affected, or at least ones that uh, aren't so global. So, you know, they might be in Australia and Chile, as an example, I'm just making an example up, but they're not selling the Australian coal to Chile, so therefore they're selling it elsewhere and they might well uh, make profits then. They also have other schemes like, uh, you know, uh, Apple, as an example. Apple Ireland owns all the Apple products. This is very paraphrased, uh, my understanding of it. And they sell the products to Apple Australia for, like, no profit. Uh, well, as in Australia, the Australian company having no profit. So just say, I don't know, they make officially the iPhone 12. I'm making up, you know, I'm sure there's no iPhone 12, but you get the idea. So a new iPhone 12 comes out, it costs $200 to make, uh, but they are going to sell it in Australia for $2,000. Uh, so uh, so uh, Apple Ireland then adds marketing fees and all this other crap, and basically they sell it to Australian Apple for, you know, two thousand dollars so when they sell it in apple australia for two thousand dollars it's got no profit anyway this is a car park anyway so i'm gonna bugger off now uh, i hope that was interesting uh, you know you can go to australia one party.com page and uh, you know see what it's like they do have some events coming up in queensland uh, maybe i'll go there maybe i'm not welcome uh, for pointing out the alleged electoral fraud of you know, Ricardo and uh, or possibly uh, Tracy Tackett's Thorn as well uh, and or, you know, a conspiracy. Uh, two or more people uh, coming together for unlawful purposes. And that relates to uh, is Ricardo eligible to be on the Queensland electoral roll which is needed to vote and to be a candidate. Uh, and he did a follow-up video and you know, my reading of that was that it was an admission uh, that he is a resident of New South Wales. They probably have just moved to Queensland. Uh, they were at the Brisbane protest uh, today. Uh, but, you know, that's about that. But, you know, I'd, of course, be well behaved. As long as people treat me nicely, I treat them nicely. If people treat me like pieces, whatever, piece of dirt and you know they can expect that to be returned too uh, as a general and specific deterrent so anyway cheerio please like share subscribe donate some money if you like i'm going now bye give kiss me oh.